in the year 261 BC that 62 years after Alexander the Great died in Babylon and 210 years before Cleopatra was born in Egypt northern India was ruled by the mighty Maurya empire its ambitious emperor Ashoka in the 8th year of his rule thought it would be cool to add the independent eastern state of Kalinga to his empire so he waged a bloody battle on the teeny tiny Kalinga so he could get control of the eastern trade routes which were crucial to the Mauryan economy the result of the war a bloodied battlefield of thousands upon thousands of dead men an equal number if not more of women and children families households left without their sons fathers and brothers thankfully for once in the history of india and perhaps the world and even mankind a privileged high born who'd always had it easy actually felt bad about the misery he had caused on so many poor families in his personal search for his vain territory and his vain glory so here was a shoka the mightiest king sunk deep in sorrow and regret at the pain he had caused an ironic turn of events if you ask me as his name ashoka actually means without sorrow this deep remorse at winning the kalinga war became the key moment of ashoka's life ashoka entirely gave up violence after this war and never fought another war to conquer territory which is very admirable of course he maintained armies to defend his territory not doing that would have been really dumb which ashoka was not but it was clear that he needed another way to conquer not with weapons but this time with peace but was that possible in a time when violence wasn't a choice for survival but a necessity yeah pre medieval india wasn't all peaceful hindu farmers going to temples and enjoying familial bliss life was poor violent and definitely uncertain the only answer available in the india of 261 bc that gave any hope for peace was buddhism buddhism was a simple modest order mostly among its monks and monasteries a place where everyone was equal not layered into castes based on birth but a place where even the low born the poor the diseased had a hope to live a life of dignity its founder the buddha had died just less than 150 years before his was a smaller star than that of hinduism but it was the one that promised the love ashoka desired for his people now When Buddha had died his mortal remains were divided and distributed among the eight kingdoms where Buddha had lived during his lifetime and each kingdom had erected a stupa to keep his remains Now why was such a thing done Well the remains of Buddha were believed to be his living energy his very presence and therefore they were extremely precious to his followers So Ashoka took these remains and further divided them into 84000 parts to distribute Buddha's presence even wider. And so he buried Buddha's remains under mounds of mud and placed a chhatra on them which was a practice to honor the revered. This was all that it was and that's what a stupa is, a burial mound. and this was how the majestic sachi stupas of today came into being the original sachi stupas were actually just half the size of the grand stupas you see today over time they grew bigger because the succeeding dynasties after ashokas added to the structure of these stupas each one wanting to contribute their bit of reverence these stupas today are actually one of the oldest stone structures left in india But as Buddhism faded out in India around the 12th century, so did the stupas. The Sachi stupas were actually a lost and forgotten site until they were rediscovered by the British around 1818. And thankfully, its walls and stones too tell us stories to help us recover its past. Especially the doorways on each side of the main stupa depicting scenes from the life and times of Buddha and Ashoka. Interestingly there's no buddha on these because he had forbidden any physical representation of him because then people would start idol worship of him 
Here on the northern gateway, the first horizontal scene shows Buddhist monks standing in reverence to the Buddha. The second scene below shows the great departure where the Buddha leaves his father's palace. And it's really funny, you see the horse five times. So this was the third century artist's charming way of portraying a moment of continuous action where the horse is going further and further away from the palace. The southern gateway shows an image of the stupa of Ramagrama near Lumbini and this was one of the only stupas with the original relics of Buddha which Ashoka did not open. The western gateway shows scenes of Buddha's first sermon and his enlightenment. These stories carved into stone by the nameless artists gave birth to the modern Jataka tales, a tradition of storytelling which is still continued today. These Sanchi stupas really are among the largest of Buddhist monuments in the world, but it's kind of funny that they are in a country where it originated, but also faded away the fastest. <laughs>